Hi, everybody. It's Mark Lubquitz, Professor of Molecular Biology from St. Michael's College in Burlington, Vermont, um, making a Love Goes Live video. Um, I'm an educator at heart, so I do this as my very small contribution um, towards COVID-19 and really to reach out to my students and to anybody else who wants to learn about the science today. So I've actually had just a totally wild day as a scientist because I spent my day really digging around the primary literature looking at mutation rates in viruses, and I learned a couple things that I didn't know. Um, for example, I think on my last posting, or maybe my second to last posting, I talked about how the COVID-19 or coronavirus genomes, that is the database that encodes all the proteins, how that database is really quite um, small, only 28,000 base pairs. Now, um, I don't work in viruses typically, I work in plants, and compared to a plant, that is a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of genetic material. Turns out that coronaviruses have some of the largest uh, viral genomes on the planet. And as of 2018, they were still thought to be the largest viral genomes on the planet. So, so I stand corrected. They are not um, tiny genomes. Well, compared to a plant, they are. But compared to other viruses, they seem to be some of the bigger ones. And in fact, um, that creates a little bit of a problem if you're a coronavirus. Here's the problem. Normally, viruses, they copy themselves, copy themselves, copy themselves, copy themselves. And instead of doing that, if they make an error during the copying, they don't fix it, right? Small genome, small error, whatever. Turns out that as your genome gets larger, if you start to make errors and you don't correct them, there's selective pressure against you. So the coronaviruses actually evidently sit right at that nexus of, if I make an error while copying the genetic material, I need to fix it. All right, so that's what I want to talk a little bit about today is, is about mutation rates in viruses and how does that relate to our understanding of COVID-19 and what might that possibly mean. So I made a little PowerPoint um, that I'd like to share with all of you. Give me a second here. All right, boom. Okay, so here we have, here we have a very um, cheesy, Mark Lubquitz is a biology professor at St. Michael's College. A true statement, I should say. And if you could think of that, this as being um, genetic material that needed to be copied before it was inherited by the next generation. In the copying process, some frequency and errors can be made. Now, when you and I, um, when our, 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 uh, our molecular machinery is copying our DNA, it corrects it. And so most of the time, in fact, like it only makes an error out of about one out of 100 million times, it will copy the exact nu nucleic acid sequence perfectly. Viruses, on the other hand, generally speaking, um, when they copy their genetic material, will make an error, and then they'll keep copying it and keep copying it and keep copying it and keep copying it. And so after you've copied it several times, that's what they call generation that I just did it there, you end up with Mark Lekowitz as a bugler, proposer at St. Michael's College. Actually, I think I've mispronounced Michael's. It's Michael's now, college. Anyway, the point being, as you can probably see, is that um, mutations accumulate over time. But as it turns out, that is not the case in coronaviruses. They actually have a protein which they encode um, that fixes problems. And what it does is it goes in there and it fixes any mutations in the coronavirus um, genome as it's being replicated. Is the machinery perfect? Absolutely not. It makes, it makes errors. Nothing in, in the molecular world is perfect. But it is less error prone than typical viruses. And really that's the point that I'm trying to make here, is that viruses tend to mutate very quickly. Turns out coronaviruses like COVID-19 do not. Um, doesn't mean that they don't mutate at all though. So I came across this great website. Um, I encourage all of you to go check it out. It's called Next Strain right up here. And oops, I write it over. And let me, let me walk you through how to interpret this. So each one of the points here on this um, phylogenetic tree represents a strain of COVID-19 that was, that was sequenced. So this is the original strain right here. And then this is progressing over time. And each point is a novel isolate that came out of a human. And so each one of these strains down here, as far as March 11th, these are all the different variants that have now been found in human patients. So what that says to us is that does COVID-19 mutate? Yes. Does it mutate at the same rate as other viruses? No. All right, so it can change, doesn't change very quickly. And I want you to notice that there's, it looks like there's three distinct groupings here. So you have this group down here, right? This group right here, and then you have a third group right here. 
I don't know if I, I don't know if these are being called strains yet, um, but they certainly look like they are diverging into three strains. Although I don't know if the people that actually make these calls are calling it that, um, so I wouldn't want to wouldn't want to put that out there. All right, who cares? Like, do we really care what the, the mutation rate is in COVID nineteen? And I think the answer is yes, and here's why. One of the hopes has been that as this virus spreads across the planet, that it would attenuate. Attenuate means that it would become less virulent. Why would we expect it to become less virulent? Because it required mutations over time. What this data suggests is that, is it, is it mutating and diverging over time? Yes. Is it going to attenuate? I don't know. I don't think any of us know. Um, I really hope it does. I really, really hope it does. But at this point, it's, uh, it's too hard to tell. All right, that's all Lookless has for today. Um, my kids told me that I should say, follow me on Instagram at Prof Lub. And I opened up a Twitter account too, but I can't remember my handle. I'll have that for next time. And if you wanna learn more about St. Michael's College, please go to our website and you can learn all about the biology department. Um, Lubquits, rising like the phoenix from the ashes once again. I'll see you next time. Cheers, bye.